going on, and it's it's not on the level that he's talking about. Okay. Yes. Is Jonathan Wells doing it for money, or is he actually does he actually believe that stuff? What an interesting question, and I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, was that? Yes, he's doing. Yeah, he's clearly doing it for his religion, and he's you know he he went to Berkeley. He's, he's, he actually worked at Labs, but I, the the impression I, I talked to a few people who worked with him at Berkeley, and they said no, he, he was a complete clod in the lab, and he he was. He was, he was one of those underachieving sort of people. So I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he's really stupid, but I kind of suspect that he's cunning and evil instead. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is a big problem. Not, not as, as was mentioned, this is just a few people. But in general, we've got this problem with the steady encroachment of creationists at all levels of the academic establishment. Yes? Yes. Uh, is, is it not possible to have something along the line of uh, a statement in labor revolution? Excuse me, we came Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. We came to here, we can save the questions for the question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's just wait a minute. There. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I'm half an hour in here now. Right, let, me just, let me just go on farther and we'll come back to you. Okay. Okay. Well, gee, I think the audience is pretty interesting. <laughs> the root of the problem here is this big word, religion. Uh, what we have is a set of religious ideologies. I, I can't pretend that they're uniform across the country. They're all over the place. But a whole collection of religious beliefs that are conspiring to undermine science. They are actively in conflict with scientific practice. And we've got to go after them. That this is not something we can ignore anymore. And I know at the same time, what you'll find is, is many of our, our best defenders of science uh, will get up in front of you and tell you, no, they're, they're compatible. We just have to have the right science, the right religious beliefs, and you can make them fit. And I, I don't think that's true unless you've got an incredibly wishy washy religious beliefs. And it doesn't matter because most of the people who have religion in the United States are. You know, they think people like Ken Miller are the devil incarnate, there to seduce them away from the true faith in Jesus Christ. That this is not going to work either. Okay, so religion is the big problem. Now, why are religion and science in conflict? And I'm, I'm going to give you some short, simple answers for why I think they're in conflict. conflict. And, and one is that these are competing ways of knowing that what we have as a goal is to understand the world around us. That what we want to know is what's going on you know, among ourselves, in physics, in chemistry, in science, all these great disciplines, and we've got to have a way of approaching that. If you know science, science uses you know, the various versions of the scientific method, it's got all these testing methods, it's got this inbuilt skepticism, it's proved to be a powerful tool for understanding the world. We have had this rapid advance in our understanding of the universe just in the, in the last few centuries as science has become dominant. Religion, on the other hand, seems to offer nothing at all other than platitudes, and I would say even more, more abusively, it's got nothing but lies. It's got stuff that people have made up that make them feel good and does not offer any true, genuine way of understanding the world. But they are in competition. Science, science often speaks harsh truths about reality, and religion tries to do the comforting business, comforting lies versus harsh truths. You know, a lot of people will weigh those two, and they'll say, yeah, I want, I want, I want the blue pill, not the red pill. And so that, that's a problem. Another problem is that a religion is epistemically empty and unverifiable. That religion makes truth claims about the world that you can't test. 
that they will say, for instance, that there is a loving creator, a God, who's living somewhere in heaven and will invite us into heaven, af in, into heaven after our death. And, and none of that is testable. When I teach my biology class, the, you know, my, I teach the freshman introductory biology class, and the first day what I do is, is I tell them the secret to make themselves look really smart to all of their teachers for the next four years. And I tell them, that, you know, what you can do is you can always ask this one question. You always ask the professor, how do you know that? You know, you can be sleeping through class most of the time, and you wake up and you hear the, the professor say something, and you can just raise your hand and say, okay, how do you know that particular piece of data? And it will sound very impressive. It's kind of the heart of science is actually, you know, looking back at the ways we know things, understanding how we know stuff. And uh, it will put the professor on the spot, and you'll actually learn something when they try to explain exactly how they, how they know that. And they will not say things like, I know that because I had this nice dream about it, or I, I know that because my pastor told me so, or I know that because my holy book says that uh, the Krebs cycle actually works. You know, that, that does not happen. Uh, they will actually tell you experiments. They will, they will point you to resources. They'll tell you, okay, here's a list of references. Go read this. You can find out all the details of the experiment. They'll point you to textbooks. It actually walk you step by step through every bit of the process. And sometimes they'll even say things like, well, I don't know. Let's go look it up. And that's good too. So we can do that in the science classroom. But you know what? If you're in church and the pastor says you have the promise of heaven, you can raise your hand and say, how do you know that? And he won't be able to tell you. I guarantee you, he will make some stuff up. Say it's in the Bible. Big deal. No. Uh, and so that's, that's an important issue, is that what we expect from a way of knowing, from a path to knowledge, is that people will be able to explain how we actually follow that path. And religion cannot do that. And of course the big reason is uh, simply this. You know, <laughs> have you listened to some of these religious myths? They're, they're amazing. They are so bizarre. I, I think about the concept of original sin, for instance. You know, you're, you're all damned to go to hell because your great, 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 many times great grandmother ate an apple when God told her not to. Doesn't that feel silly? Why, why should I be at blame for that old biddy making that terrible mistake? Okay, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a horrible thing. What, what about this whole myth of Jesus Christ? That somehow we achieve redemption because God made himself material, but then he was killed. But he wasn't really killed. He came back to life. And somehow, if we believe that, he's going to forgive us the fact that Grandma ate that apple. <laughs> okay, so you can take any religion, and, and you look at the fundamental premises, and they're, they're, they're absolutely absurd. This, this is where I lost my faith, is uh, the, the key factor that led me to, to the abandonment of religion was I was a Lutheran, I went through confirmation classes, they told me what I'm supposed to believe in order to be a Lutheran, and it's not believable. Wake up, people. This is crazy talk that they're telling you. And you swallow it just because your parents and their parents before them, for generation after generation, have told you that this is the way it is. And you've got to wake up and question this. Okay, so that's, that's one reason it's, it's in conflict, is because if you're, a sci if you're a scientist, you're not going to accept ridiculous ideas unless they've got a lot of good evidence behind them. And, you know, for instance, the Krebs cycle really is kind of a ridiculous concept when you actually look at it. It's very bizarre, all these molecules flying all over the place. But they got evidence for it. We can demonstrate it. We can, we can do the experiments. Okay. So they're, they're in conflict. And we've got problems right now. That, that in the United States, we're trying to fight creationism, but we've got these, these problems that are preventing us from doing it. And, and one is simply that we've got this passive defensive strategy that the NCSE which is a marvelous organization, and, and I'm not rebuking them at all. I'm saying they're doing their job in a great way, but they're the defense. That's all they're doing, is they're fighting the defense. Well, we've got no offense. If you're going to score points, you need an offense, okay? It's not enough to be sitting there guarding the door to the classroom. Another problem is, is what if we lose one of these court cases? I've brought this up a few times with some of the people at NCSE, and, and they get very huffy with me when I do this. They say, we're not going to lose these court cases. Have you looked at the Bush administration and the Supreme Court in the United States? 
Of course we can lose these cases. If they got to the right level, if they got the right set of judges, we could lose any of these cases. Uh, what would have happened if we'd lost the Dover trial? 